Hello everybody, welcome. So today's reaction video is gonna be slightly different than the usual because An amazing person named Jessica reached out to me and she's actually one of the clients from TCS Everyday Psychics and she's still having paranormal issues and she wanted me to you know help her figure things out so Everyday Psychics did a cleansing for Jessica and she said things were fine for like two days and then like I guess on the third day Things started to pop off again, and she just wanted some extra help, which there's nothing wrong with. And maybe, you know, if Everyday Psychic sees this, they can also learn something. But um, I learned something from other psychics and mediums and things. So I'm not trying to be a dick <laughs> about this. But there are some things that they did miss in their initial consultation, if you want to call it that. And yeah, I'm going to go be going through that. I'll be putting in snippets of the session that Everyday Psychics did with her, just here and there, just for context reasons. And I'll be reacting to some of those clips as well. But yeah, so we're going to go through this. And Mickey's on in the background. So yeah, this is going to be educational. This is not to attack anybody. I might be adding some things here and there. And, you know, based off my interpretations, what may be different from theirs, etc. And just because I may come up with something different than them or vice versa, doesn't mean anyone's wrong. It's really up to interpreting the signs and the symbols and the messages from spirit. So without further ado, here we go. Once you have the thought, oh, I think I'm going to reach out to these women, that it there's like this, like this mm -hmm. line of communication that sets up this line, and then he can just follow yeah. that stream of energy and come find us. Yeah. So yes, they are absolutely 100% correct on this. It's very similar to watching shows too on Paranormal, especially when it's anything regarding the paranormal. So if you're like a medium or psychic who is sensitive to that energy, just thinking about either watching it or watching it or anything along those lines, you can accidentally create a line of energy for it to go back and forth and it can affect you. So I love that they state this. They are 100% correct. So when I was going through the video, um, I immediately, immediately noticed there was a male spirit and this spirit in question has dark brown, fine textured hair, looks to be around like 25 to 32 years old, clean shaven with a sort of baby face, brownish, greenish, hazel eyes that have that inquisitive look to them. He looks harmless and even charming at first glance. However, it is an illusion he puts on to give a false sense of security. He's actually very invasive and demanding. He's narcissistic and giving spirit spouse vibes, which later on as I go through the whole channeling, he is a spirit spouse. He's extremely vindictive and loves the power dynamic between men and women in an unhealthy, toxic way, which, you know, everyday psychics do kind of mention this. So that's validating them, but also validating myself as well. He comes off nice again initially, but he's not. He was drawn in for a few reasons. One, because of the single mother aspect. This can also apply to those 
who are females who spend a lot of time alone even if they have a significant other since the energy is similar and even females who feel alone this is just an example but being a single mother he likes that two her dog passed away and was her protector this dog was very spiritual and acted as like her guard and kept things away most of the time but now that he's physically no longer there spirits are like now i have a chance to do whatever i want to do he's he comes in and out though um when he can to check on her and if he notices things he does like chase them away and gets rid of them but a lot of times he's not there and so those spirits and entities do take advantage of that so jessica i highly recommend down the line when you are ready to maybe get another dog and the thing is with your dog too spirit was telling me that he's going to help you pick a new companion and guard for you that'll help you with the spirit activity so it's kind of like he's it's like a training thing he's like getting the next dog ready for you essentially which i find is really cool and the spirit and entities because there i did notice too there is a portal in that pantry closet thing but the things that do linger they're using that sadness of losing the dog to feed from and are affecting you more directly because he's not there to protect you as often three because you have psychic abilities that the entity in spirit can use against you in a way it helps him the spirit spouse negatively affect you more than it would some average joe who may not even notice his attempts at tormenting them which everyday psychics do mention this at around nine minutes and 36 seconds so people with abilities are more affected and they like that and they take advantage of that fact so yes and again he likes it that way because he's vindictive and likes the power he gains by making you suffer plus your energy is better to feed from because you are such a bright light and from what i gathered it seems that the spirit spouse is that way because he himself was abused allegedly right i can't say for fact but allegedly by what looks like a parental figure maybe his father who may have also abused women and then like the fourth reason as to why and how things you know kind of crept in your past negative experiences with men and having similar traumas that give off a similar energy signature aka there's some sort of energetic match from traumas that you've endured and um they don't have to be the same as long as the energy kind of like feels the same or is same in vibration but i do think there are some parallels though so it's like that energy attracted him he's been with you for a while honestly a pretty good long time all right yeah how long have you lived in this house jessica um i well this is a it's a trailer home uh -huh. So it's been moved, but I've lived in it since 2008. Oh, okay. And so, we, yeah, I'm almost my entire adult life. <laughs> okay. And so when did this start? I, I don't have that written down. When did it, when did the activity start for you? Um, let's see, it would have been. A year and a half ago, when my that was when my uh, dog passed away. Okay. Okay. All right. And had you moved the trailer about that time? Um, I have actually lived uh, in this spot since two thousand and fourteen. Okay. All right. And then after the dog and this dude showed up at some point, um, she became a, more active. And then around here at 10 minutes and 40 seconds into the video, the man, that's a spirit spouse, 
kind of, it feels like he came from a trailer park environment and has been around her since she moved there. I think she's, it's been around her even before she moved to the new spot. And the only reason she noticed the activity around her a year and a half ago when her dog passed away is because, again, the dog kept it at bay, but also he's using her sadness to feed from, but he's actually been, you know, around for a pretty long time. And as I wrote this part in my notes, um, my back near my right shoulder blade starts to burn like I was scratched by a cat, which is weird. So just because if you're having any sensations like that, uh, it's because he's attacking you. And then after the dog and this dude showed up at some point, um, she became a, more active. Okay. So she may have been there for quite a while and you just didn't realize it. Or maybe you did realize yeah. she just wasn't bothersome. That's possible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she was fairly quiet yeah. before. Yep. Yep. All right. P pretty quiet. Um, he really aggravated her. Yeah. So now she's staying with you is what comes. I'm going to protect you. You can't do this on your own. Mm -hmm. I need to have this connection and I need this to have, and I'm protect. And that helps her feel good. Exactly. That's why she was drawn because of the grief. She came to, um, to comfort you. Around the 12 minute mark ish. They talk about an older woman. Now I'm not going to negate whether or not that woman's there because there's a portal there in the closet a lot of things come and go. So maybe at that particular time when they did that consultation with her, there really was one. However, for me, I'm seeing more of like this residual energy between an older woman and an older male, like a um, married couple, like an old married couple that bickers and fights. One drinks a lot and the other one's like, grieving but like is more on the alone side because she feels like her husband's a piece of crap and she's doing all the household work and you know there's like that animosity there but again I feel like that is an more of an energetic imprint but again my interpretation so what they said could be right what I'm saying could also be right 13 minutes uh they are absolutely right about Earthies being codependent in some way, shape, or form, at the bare minimum, they rely on others to feed off of their energy. And there's this dynamic where the victim and the spirit enables and contributes to the other's issues. As an example, and this is like an example in general, not specifically to Jessica, but Earthies will influence a negative behavior from a person to feed from the negative energy output. So example, again, this isn't particular to Jessica. This is just an example. An alcoholic drinks, which creates negative energy for the, the entity or spirit to feed off of. Then the negative entity knows this. So it does things such as paranormal activity, forms of sabotage or accidents, influences emotions and thoughts, etc. Basically anything to create a stressor in the environment to get the person to act out on their addictions. And of course, the addict is looking for any reason to continue their behavior. It's just a negative cycle and a negative energy feeding cycle too. And I noticed the older woman even though it's like an energetic imprint, she is in the kitchen a lot, like messing with the dishes, like doing household like chores, like cooking, cleaning, stuff like that. Okay. This, gonna... this is the wall, actually. The wall that if you stand in front of, it um, it makes you feel dizzy. Yeah. And and you got this pressure on your head when if you're in here too long. Around 16.30. The dizziness is definitely caused by the energy and spirits. However, spirit also recommends changing the color of those very like pigmented blue walls to ease up on the eyes and psyche. I personally think that the color is stunning against the wooden floor, but my guys are saying that this type of color is taxing on the eyes. While blue generally has an overall positive meaning and or feeling behind it, if a person spends a lot of time around a specific color, 
feeling a certain type of way, whether it's positive or negative, they're going to start associating those emotions with the environment they're around. So it could be like how things are organized or just like the colors in the area. And yeah, same can be said about the environment in general. So if that room has looked the same for several years, I recommend changing it up, especially the wall color. And if the room hasn't been changed around or organized differently in a while, I'd also like move the furniture around, make it fresh. Um, for a lack of a better term, he's in love with you. He thinks he is. They don't feel in his position. Love is not love there in, in that mm -hmm. dimension, but he certainly has a connection with you. He has the attachment to you. If you want to, I know people, ghost hunters use the word yeah. attachment different than we okay. do. 17 minutes in, even though the earthy has a nasty toxic behavior and mentality about women, they are right about him being in love with her. Even though it's more of an obsession than love, he is low in vibration. Do I think spirits, earthies that haven't crossed over can love? I think they can, but based off of the vibratory match and where they fall, can teeter between obsession and more negative emotions. But yeah, it's very unhealthy. And again, spirit spouse. And it wants to be with her. It wants to be in a relationship with her. I don't know what that is at the moment. Marilyn will figure it out, I'm sure. Um, it's like a, a I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry to say this, but I'm not sorry, sorry, whatever. <laughs> it, it feels like an old drunk couple. Like this, this older couple, she's, she's like shorter, rounder, heavier. He's tall and thin. And I don't know what, that's just the look they're giving me. Cause you kind of see this in movies a lot, right? I don't know why that couple is in movies a lot, but they drink a lot. They fight a lot. I'm not saying that they're a couple, but that's the, the, sort of relationship they have now, and she just gets pissed at him. Mm -hmm. Around 19 minutes. She starts questioning what the older woman is, if it's got any sort of relationship to the man. Um, and by she, I mean everyday psychics. So they're talking about that. But this is where I kind of stopped the video because I wanted to do my own channeling and my own analysis, like away from the video. Even though I was still channeling as it was going, I want to do it without it going. But um, I just wanted to say that I definitely still see the man. Like I stated earlier, the spirit spouse one is the same in appearance. Um, he looks attractive and can shapeshift into however he wants to look. However, he is limited based off of how he can shapeshift. So he can only really change certain aspects of himself, like subtle things like age, weight, stuff like that. He's been with her for a long time. He is very obsessive over Jessica and does things that are perverted and is a super creepo. It looks like he does try to take advantage of her when she sleeps, especially in dreams, even if she doesn't remember them. There are times, especially because I was having dreams and I've had several dreams with the same man in it, okay? And it's the it's the spirit spouse. It's her spirit spouse. But yeah, she might not remember all her dreams, which is fine. Which is why it's important to keep a journal and keep track of all your dreams. Because a lot of times you'll wake up and you'll get distracted and then it's gone. So I always recommend doing that. But I had two dream and astral experiences with this person. But in dream state, he has more flexibility in his shape-shifting ability and can look however he wants. So he's not as limited as he is in non-dreamland, if you want to call it that. In my experience, spirits like this will also look like a person you are attracted to. 
pretend to be them and take advantage that way. So it's always important to be mindful and careful. Jessica, your energy is being drained so much that it's affecting your mental and physical health to where it's kind of been on the decline a little bit. And because you're sensitive to energy, and I'm not taking credit for this, she literally just told me this part anyway, that, you know, when she leaves the house, um, she feels so drained. And that's because she is empathic and she's absorbing the energy around her and not transmuting it properly. I have the same problem. Um, now, during my channeling, I did purposely induce a sleep because I knew I would get more of the full picture in the astral realm. And so this specific experience, it looked like they were at some event. She's sitting at a table with all her friends. He's there and some other guys there. But it looks like she's asking for help to get something. She gets ignored except the guy, the spirit spouse, helps her. Although he doesn't fully help her to what she needs. And I'm just like, that's weird. That's an interesting dream to have. But he plays off as nice. But he's not. He's not. So in the other experience with the same dark haired man, he claims to be in love with her and wants her to marry him. But yeah. So that, to me, solidifies the spirit spouse thing. There's a lot of activity in the kitchen area and closet because of the portal. Oh, the spiritual awakening only made her more aware of the fact that there are issues in the space. I did see some symbols. Let's see. I got the strength symbol and like this weird... I don't know if it's like a church or a building next to a building or part of the same building, but I did see that. And then for the second entity, this one's causing most of the paranormal activity. The spirit spouse is more like attached to her and goes with her wherever she goes. And this thing, this wispy thought form shadowy thing, um, is a tulpa, which means it was created by others or the environment, but kind of had more of a purpose to it. It is parasitic, so it does feed and drain her energy. It does have elemental qualities to it, to a degree. And let's see, this thing is what's messing around in her closet a lot of times. But also because the portal's in there, things keep coming and going, and just that in of itself causes paranormal activity. The energetic imprint of the old Mary couple I feel like may create create sounds like dishes clinking or clinking on glass. That's more of that. But the other stuff is more of the, the thought form, just moving around and doing stuff. But I did draw like the thought form. It's very like wispy and shadowy. It almost looks like one of those things from Harry Potter. Is it like a Death Eater? I forget. It kind of looks like one of those. But these things can be kicked out. Yeah, psychic abilities can draw things in and kind of make a person a beacon. But the thing is, those with abilities, I feel like, have stronger, what's the word, abilities when it comes to manifestation. So her cleansing technique should be more potent and be more helpful. But so, um, Jessica, I recommend Copal and Frankincense. And I have a video where I show how I do the cleansing in my space. Um, and I'll link it here. You can watch it if you haven't watched it already. And I would do that weekly. Now you need to close the portal in your space. So I would get the holy oil. That's important. You can also put the holy oil on your chakras if you feel like you're being attacked or like you feel like something's going on when you're trying to sleep. Put that shit on you. Um, and then in terms of the closet where there's a lot of activity, go in there, ask your guides for help because you have guides and ask them to help you seal it. You can visualize it being sealed too. I would recommend doing that. And then take that holy oil, put it on both sides of the door 
and also on the inside of that closet, okay? You're gonna do that weekly. And if you notice any improvements, you know, do it weekly for a bit and then maybe you can span it to bi-weekly. And then, you know, if things are fine then, maybe tri-weekly. Is that a word? I don't even know. Like once every three weeks. And if that seems to be going well, then you can do it once a month. But typically those with abilities, you're gonna have to clean or cleanse your space for the rest of your life. That's just how it is, unfortunately. But it's manageable. So I don't want anyone to ever feel like stressed out that, oh my God, this is gonna be like this forever. If you set up a routine, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I deal with this shit all the time. It's fine. You just gotta, again, have your routine. Um, crystals, your black tourmaline, black obsidian would be very helpful. You can put it on your third eye and during meditation and let it cleanse your third eye energy. You might feel a weird sensation, but that is normal. You can put the holy oil there too. That'll help you. Um, rose quartz would be helpful. Clear quartz and amethyst would be very helpful. You might already have all those things. If so, awesome. You could do Sage and Palo Santo, but I feel like the frankincense and Copal would be better for you just based off of things coming and going based off of them being attracted to your energy. I would meditate, meditate regularly. You probably do that again. I feel like you might, um, and learn how to ground yourself. I feel like a Reiki session, an energy healing session would highly benefit you. Um, I'm not qualified yet to do it for you, but you can also learn to do that with the crystals. And there's so many online free videos on YouTube. You can do it. Um, or you can go to somebody. Like if you have the finances to do that, do it. I feel like it would be very helpful. The traumas that you have, you have to work on healing those because that's what they're feeding from. Especially the spirit spouse. It's, it likes the fact that you've had struggles, especially with a significant other, and it brings it up, I highly suspect, over and over again, and might bring in negative thoughts. So just working on healing your mental health and your physical health would very much help you with this and take away its food source. If, if you're doing any cards like tarot, oracle, whatever, just make sure you cleanse them regularly that's easy. You literally get some Palo Santo, slide it on fire, and let the smoke cleanse your cards. That's all you have to do for that. Um, since you use the Spirit app on your phone, even though you don't do it anymore, maybe run some of that smoke over your phone too, just to, you know, make sure. Let's see what else. You can use white candles or black candles, and you could write like, hey, spirit guide, or like Archangel Michael or Jesus, I don't want this attachment here, get rid of it please, and whatever like that. Put it under the candle, obviously fire safety, so be mindful of that, and just light your candle, and doing that will help you manifest that outcome. So for you, I would highly recommend doing that too. Spend more time in nature, cleansing baths. Um, you can literally take a bath, put some herbs in it, Epsom salt, um, depending on what you want to get out of it. You could put like rose petals in there. That could help with the self-love thing. Um, I use artoftheroot.com because they already have pre-made like salts with herbs and things that'll help with that. You could try that and then when you're in the bathtub just like the visualize the energy coming out of your body and into the water and just do stuff like that. But there are plenty of things you can do. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, I already gave you a lowdown in um, the DMs. So, but this is for anyone else going through something similar. But yeah, um, if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, 
leave them down below. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And I will see you guys soon. I'm hoping to put at least two videos this week. We shall see. But anyway, peace out.